Hey there, uh, my name is JJ and we are gonna hop right in to understanding case statements within Data Studio, a couple of use cases, how to use them. So I hope you got some coffee, you buckled up because this might be a little bit of a lengthy video, um, but I really want you to have a full understanding of at least some ideas behind how you can use a case statement to either aggregate metrics, aggregate dimensions, turn a metric into a dimension possibly. Um, we got a whole, I got a whole bunch of use cases um, that I use pretty much daily. Um, but yeah, just buckle up. And if you have not yet, be sure that you have downloaded the uh, Data Studio Cheat Sheet. Um, again, really helps you build out really awesome dashboards that are not overwhelming um, to your clients, to your bosses and to yourself, right? We want a single action out of it. This cheat sheet over there helps you get that ASAP. So um, yeah, datastudio.vip forward slash YouTube, grab that cheat sheet. All right, let's just hop right into it. And we are gonna start with the lovely Google documentation. This is not fun, right? So this is gonna give you the basics of it. Um, you'll find it in the description down below. It gives you some basic examples that are not very useful, but we, it, it's there, it does what you need. Uh, another plug is on a data studio.vip forward slash case. There is a lovely, much more exciting with emojis like poop emojis on how to do it. So um, just again, that'll be down in the description down below. Make sure you have taken a look. All right, let's hop into data studio because we are gonna be teaching you exactly how to do this. So a case statement is a normal uh, new function, right? Create the new field that did not exist before. So you could add that here. We could create a new field, type in case, and we are off to the races. But let's not do that. We're gonna create it first at the um, data source level. So I'm gonna create a new field here. And we are just gonna start uh, giving some examples, right? So um, one thing to note, right, is just that don't get overwhelmed, right? It, it, it's really scary when you first start. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, like I don't even know what I'm doing, but just try to like follow along. I'm gonna give you some examples and hopefully you can, again, take some action. So the first thing you need to know is, about a case statement is that uh, there are four parts, right? The first part is a case. <laughs> that's why it's called a case statement. You then have something that's a when X, right? And then you're gonna have then Y, right? And then you're going to have uh, an else, right? So if, for example, you have something else that you want to happen, if nothing meets, and then end, right? That's all you need to have a case statement, case, and then this basically tells you um, what's happening, when is what the conditions you have, then do something else, else, if a fallback just Oh shit, it's a case scenario. And and tells it it's done. Okay, let's make a little one right here. So I'm gonna delete this first. We're gonna start from scratch. Just wanted to get that out of the way. So let's say for like here you can see all, all of our URLs um, that I've got here. And you'll see that we actually are using Data Studio, um, like Google Data Studio as uh, a specific page. Let me just open this up a little bit bigger so we can all see together. Um, and so here you can see Google Data Studio. Um, we have an explain it, uh, explainer custom visualization that we have a demo of that our GA4 property is also on. And I wanna make a new um, category. Just honestly, how many of these users are from our website versus my uh, explain it um, and other types of Data Studio resources, right? So how can we do that? You could add filters, right? That, that's an option, uh, we wanna do that. But I wanna make a case statement because I wanna use this field in the future. So what I'm gonna do is look at some criteria. So when um, datastudio.vip and then the other ones is um, datastudio.google.com. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new one and there's no case when, right? That's what we're talking about. When um, the page, right? Again, we're just looking at our fields here, page, full page URL, when full page URL, and then I'm just gonna write out in words so it, it contains um, datastudio.vip.vip, then we wanna do something else, right? And so what we can do here, I'm gonna use regex because I just, again, we want to use the tools we have. Um, I only use a few things because it's really, really helpful. So what we're going to do is use regex match of full page URL, comma, 
uh, the quotes, and we're going to say when it starts with data studio.vip. And then we'll put here, we'll have then. Then I'm going to put WordPress website. We're going to create another one when, and we'll do the same thing. I'm going to just copy it, right? Because it's, it's again, it's really easy to copy and paste. Um, I have some giant sausage fingers that touch extra keys. So um, I'm just going to use this. So data studio, again, I think that's the prefix here, dot google.com, dot google, google dot com. Then it's going to be data, data studio uh, resource. And else, we're going to then put our favorite little things over here. We can just, again, we can use whatever we'd like to. But being me, I'm just going to put the poop emoji because if we did that, we then messed up. And then we have end. Okay. So again, a little bit of a complex here, but I'm going to walk you through it. So case starts it out. When regex match, right? When this matches this regex statement, so whenever it starts with datastudio.vip, then it's the WordPress website. When it matches the full page URL, it starts with datastudio.google.com, then we have data studio resource. If it's not one of those, then I messed up and we got some little shit emojis and then it ends. So we're going to have, we have a green light down here at the bottom left. So it looks like we are working out. So let's test this out. We're going to call this, um, let's call it website type. Just making up something here. Website marketing type. T Y P. -E. Okay. Hit save. Let's see if this worked. So I'm going to hit done. I hit updated. Now we're going to add in here, website marketing type. Boom. Does it work? No, it does not. We messed up. <laughs> see, that's the, again, it's really helpful to use that else statement just so you don't see null. We have our little poop emoji. So what do we mess up? That's where we want to see is if we hop back into this actual formula, we can then find out what we did wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just, just change a little bit um, of this. So I believe that this regex is um, going to be inclusive. So I'm just gonna throw a dot star here just to say, hey, it starts with data CWIP and then anything can follow it, so, or nothing. And we're gonna hit update and then just see if it, if it fixes it right there. And what do you know? There we go. Um, if you don't know regex, do not worry. Um, head over to, oopsies. Well, I was going to show you. Head over to datastudio.vip forward slash regex. And you should, again, great tutorial about the basics of it. Okay. So now we have this. We've categorized our things. It seems to be working correctly. Um, and then let's just get rid of everything else, right? So we say we want to have the users who did that and we can get rid of all of single of these and now we can have users um, here so let's just say we want to have uh, total users and you can see here during this time period we had 1500 uh, people to the wordpress site and we had 159 to our data studio resources um, then for just again, for example, this is a great way. And then we had five people to something that was unknown. So we could dr drill into that. Let's just do that really quickly. And just so we have an idea of let's, let's sort that there. And looks like it's not at the top. So again, showing you lots of examples, real world case scenario. What you can do is now use this thing. If you, for example, had a, um, had a client that you wanted to then have them be able to filter, we can actually use this and we can call this website marketing type and put that there. And now you can easily filter in the view mode, right? And say, I only want to see the WordPress website pages. And now you have those. Maybe you only want to see the data studio resource pages. Now we have those. Maybe you only want to see the shit pages because we don't know what those are. And here it is our staging site, right? And so now let's just go in here, datastudio.vip, and we can just copy this. Again, this is just showing you a real world example of how you can use the case statements to maybe uh, get something um, that's workable for you. Hit edit, come in here when, and then we can just say regex. Okay, I'm just gonna use regex match, but there's a lot of different ways you can do this. 
regex underscore match. And then we can put full page URL, comma, again, semi colon thingy, uh, hit start. And then we wanna just put this in here so that we have this because we know that every single page is gonna be this and we'll put dot star at the end. And then it's staging. And we will hit update. So there we go, right? Now we have the poop emoji, doesn't exist anymore, but we can now say, let's just see our staging pages. Let's just see our resource pages. Let's see our WordPress website. So now we can easily create a simple, like let's just do it really fast. I wanna show you real time. Again, if you learn all the tips and tricks of Data Studio, you can build something pretty quickly. So here we've got total users um, between March and April on the WordPress website. We then can go to Data Studio Resources and you can see those people trending over time and you can see staging over time and you can see that was just one day, probably myself uh, out here messing things up. So again, hope this was helpful, right? That's one case to do uh, at least group grouping your website into different ways um, to then filter that easily. So now, Let's go with another example that I just actually implemented for a client is we had this exact same scenario But what we did is we had help desk we had support um, for their actual uh, Members right and then we had the marketing website So what we actually did is we used uh, different signals to then create uh, the ability for a their marketing department to then drill down into any individual segment of their website, right? So we had the help desk, we had their support, which is for internal uses. We then had the members, which is the members area. We then had the marketing site. So easily, super, super simply, uh, the their marketing department can click and select any individual segment of their entire marketing stack um, to drill into. So again, real life use case, trying to keep as actionable as possible. Just a quick reminder, everybody, uh, to download the cheat sheet if you have not already. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. So now let's do something a little bit more fun, right? What we wanna do is we wanna then, um, let's get, get rid of all of this because this is not what we need right now. And I'm gonna actually add a new data source, 100% new, we're starting from scratch. So let's add in here. Let's then go and select our other data sources, which is gonna be the we're gonna use the actual demo account from Google. And what we're gonna do here is add in our source here. We're then gonna add in revenue. And we are then going to add in average. Okay. So here we're gonna say we have average, oh my goodness, AVG dot price, which is gonna be tied to that average order value. That's what we want. All right, so now we have something here where we have average order value is broken down by these specific averages. But what we wanna do is we actually want to create our own um, kind of segments of different um, buyers, buyer segments, right? So here, let's make a copy of this. So this, we wanna use that as a reference, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have transaction, the transaction ID, which is gonna segment this by our individual transactions. We are then gonna have the revenue by the transaction ID and the average order value is gonna be the same because usually transaction ID is tied to the average order value. So here you can see we've got a bunch of transaction IDs and we want to be able to easily classify these. So it looks like we got some that are less than 300, more than 400, and we got a thousand plus. So let's create a new field, and we're going to group this is um, we're going to group this into revenue um, being less than 300 dollars, between 300 and a thousand, and a thousand or more. So. Um, revenue per transaction. Let's just look for what we would like to look for, right? So we want revenue, transaction, transactions per user, right? Transactions, and we got transaction ID. Um, so what we want to actually look for here is revenue per user, revenue per transaction, product revenue, and I think we'll be good. Okay, cool. 
Let's just dive right into it. So we're gonna be looking at this right here. So when revenue, revenue, let's make up our case statement right here, I know. Um, so why do we have that? When case, when revenue is greater than 1000, then we're gonna basically put in here that they are a whale, right? We're gonna put in because that is what we are looking for. And when revenue is less than or equal, like, sorry, great, like we want this be either greater than or equal to, that's how you do that. When it's less than 1000 and revenue is greater than or equal to 300, then we're gonna put this as our um, cat, right? Because we have our little little cat there. Then it's gonna be called our kitty cats. And when revenue is less than 1,000, then we're gonna make them into our mice. And else, if something else is there, we're just gonna say, oops, end. So what we're doing here, again, we're using our case statements to then say when the revenue is greater than or equal to 1,000, then whales. When revenue is less than 1,000, then, and revenue is greater than or equal to 300, then we got the kitty cats. So that is what we're gonna, we're gonna call this uh, transaction segmentation. So here we're gonna hit save. Do, do, do. Okay. So now we're gonna look for our little one that we just made, transaction segmentation. And we're gonna get rid of our revenue here. And now you can see here that what we just did is we actually created a new field to at a glance see exactly um, the different types here. So now what we're gonna do is create another one, right? So we're gonna see how many different transactions are kitty cats. And what I'm gonna do is create a new field here. We're gonna call it count transaction segmentation. And it's gonna be number of transactions. Oops, it's not liking that. So give me a sec and we will get that sorted. Alrighty, so yeah, what we just did right now, um, again, I'm just, I just used the same exact thing that we had, just dropped in landing page so that we can now have a little bit more useful of an action, right? So here we've got the page the transaction segmentation of whether that page is yielding kitty cats, whales, or mice. Um, and so now we at least have a little bit more of an idea in our, if we had to, had to go to our view mode, right? Is we now have an idea of, whoa, are these, are, what type of transactions are these yielding, right? Um, so that's just another useful use case for case. Um, and it's just, again, a real, one of those things where you're like, okay, I understand how to use it. There's a bajillion ways, right? There's a lot of different examples of using revenue, using aggregations, etc. cetera. Um, but this is the main thing I wanted to show you is that you can use case to create segments. You can use case to clean things up, right? If you wanted to then group things appropriately. Um, and you can then um, use those case statements to then layer other functions within, right? So. Again, I hope this was really helpful. I hope that you at least understood the basics of case. We've got an entire article, which is linked down below, that I wrote about how to use a case statement and just some practical examples for you. Um, again, it's very, very, probably the most powerful thing you can do in most development, but then also within Data Studio, I think it's the most powerful thing you're able to build uh, reports with, dashboards with, etc. So again, I hope this was helpful. I hope that you uh, didn't go too fast and then you actually have at least a few actions to take. All right, I'll see you in the next video and subscribe if you don't know.